I do like swivel. Okay. And, and I can still keep a good a good consistency, you know, up to a certain tempo. And and so I just try to make it work, you know, because I like the sound of an acoustic kit. I just yeah. do. And and, and, and the, the kits I have, like the, the I currently play the, the Star Classic Maple for the most part. It sounds so good and the kicks and everything sounds so good. It's like it's kind of a shame to 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 replace the sounds, you know. Even though nowadays you could technically like just sample the actual kick and then use that and trigger it so it's still be around the sound. But I don't know, there's just to me, you know, maybe it's because I grew up in an era where you know, a lot of the stuff I used to listen to, their producers were still figuring out what this music even was, but I learned how to produce it, you know, like yeah, like we true. were talking about you going back and discovering early napalm and repulsion and stuff like they're probably going to be like this sounds like utter shit and these people don't know how to play you know because that's kind of like how it was back then but to me that's also ironically or, or whatever you want to call it that's part of the charm of that style of music is that you know there's this era now or this vision where everything just needs to sound super perfect and everything's to a click and and I'm curious to, to hear your, your opinion about this because to me, like, sure, in some situations, that's great. And I get why people do it. And yeah. people get used to hearing this stuff of high quality and it's cool. But I'm also very relieved to see that there are still bands, current day bands that are, you know, that understand that things like thrash metal and death metal and grindcore and black metal needs to be grimy and evil and, and not really clean. And even rock and roll, you know, like, to, to, to speak more to like some of that where you're in, it's like yeah. it's not all about like if it's too shiny and perfect, there's not that much rock and roll left about it, in my opinion. You know, I mean, to a degree it works, but you know, there needs to be some kind of live feeling and some kind of rawness and maybe kind of teetering off the edge at times that, that you don't get when you play everything to like, here's the tempo for the song, you know, like here it is, like just to the tempo, you know. I mean, I do it all the time because I have to do it, but yeah, I try to, to stick to, you know, I, I try to infuse it with as much humanity and, and kind of flow as I can because to me, like, when you go watch, say, The Stones, you know, Charlie Parker, rest the, I mean, Ch Charlie Watts, rest the soul, you know, yeah. I saw him, luckily, my wife and I got to see him a few times when and Charlie was still, in the, still alive, you know, and still Amazing. doing his magic. I mean, there's something about that that you just can't, you know, you can't change that. You can't replicate that. You know, it's the natural interaction between people. And it might flow a little bit differently each night. So you have some unknowns that don't add up with, you know, video walls and pre-programmed lights and whatnot. But to me, that's part of the beauty of this kind of music. 